of Jesus. Of Jesus, forever to bless. Sorry, let me get back. Make sure everything's working. Everything's working. <sighs> Good morning. It's not really morning though, uh, but I just woke up. I've slept all day, and it felt so good. Uh, so good. Um, I had a really bountiful time uh, with my brother in town, and um, just out in creation, and just witnessing glory after glory from uh, vistas and mountains and rocks and oceans to dolphins and seals and elephant seals and starfish and crabs and so many cool creations as well as just the the joyful intricate masterpiece that we human beings are and can be and uh but we can be lots of things we can run lots of different directions can't we so in that i wanted to read a good little section from mark uh yeah better get on it too mark four parable of the sower you may have heard this i actually sang a song about it and i may uh where I played a, a stuttering spider. It was pretty sweet. A certain so with a thumb teeth. No, wait, that was the other guy's lines. For some reason, I, hit, I remember his. I just stuttered a lot. And again, he began to teach by the sea. Mark 4, by the way. And a great multitude was gathered to him, so that he got into a boat and sat in it in the sea. On the sea. And the whole multitude was on the land facing the sea. Kind of a pretty picture, isn't it? Then he taught them many things by parables, and said to them in his teaching, Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow, and it happened, as he sowed, that some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground, where it did not have much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it and it yielded no crop. But other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up, increased, and produced some thirtyfold, some sixty, some a hundred. And he said to them, He who has ears to hear, let them hear. But when he was alone, thanks, those, among, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable, and he said to them, To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but to those who are outside, all things come in parables, so that, quote, seeing they may hear and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word, and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their heart. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Yay! And they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world the deceitfulness of riches, and the desire for other things entering in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. But these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, some a hundred. Now, the word of God is a powerfully transformative thing, or rather it can be. And it is easy to have any see us in any of these reactions, though, regardless of the beauty of it. You know, he comes to Jesus came to say, "God is indeed real. God is indeed vibrantly alive and well, and desirous of relationship to you. God is not super pleased with 
all these trappings you have placed around your heart and all these preoccupations you have you have sown in your mind and he's also not pleased with your perversion of his intention and his joys for you and the creator of the world is a righteous God a righteous God who craves holiness desires you to be holy desires you to glory in his glory of holiness desires you to live in union and his word comes to turn from yourself if you feel lacking if you feel lost it's because you are lost you are alone you're a paltry thing without him you're to be your 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 wayside feed you know you're fruitless but he says come receive my word bear fruit be fruitful be compassionate bear in love follow my light turn from your own darkness you by yourselves are feckless alone dark ever clamoring from this thing to the next thing but he says his word will fall on many types of ears you know when you hear that when you hear wait the the Lord God wants to be wants me to be holy and wants to dance and sing for me wants to celebrate with me wants me to celebrate with him for all eternity then that is a in some ways that's quite easy to get joyful about and this is Jesus preaching before he sacrificed himself but that was an even greater fulfillment wait Christ came taught truth came as the Son of God spoke beautiful powerful stern and yet joyful compassionate truth to everyone and then he gave of himself he sacrificed that I might see that holiness that he desired I mean it's easy to go ahead and be yippee ki about that and run and just run around like a chicken with your head cut off being in joy about it but also one has to be cautious take that zeal and and apply all wisdom to it and apply all diligence to it for it not to be torn up you know because the word is good by itself you know but how often do we ever receive goodness by itself you know even a kindness of a friend or a stranger we sometimes have the uh, tendency to kind of like pick apart why were they nice were they nice were they trying to do this were they trying to make, make up for this other thing where they blah 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 we do that with everything don't we nitpick and and parse and logic and reason and or we just blindly accept it and really don't even settle into the moment I mean there's something I'm still trying to learn in here that is both like pursuing depth in him be rooted deeply in in the Lord's goodness in patience and in zeal see those two things are really hard for me you know because I don't want to be the zealous person it's like yippee ki but I'm rootless you know what I mean we've all seen those people we've all felt that thing we've felt that moment in ourselves when we're like super excited about something we can tell it's just rootless we're just like it's a sort of blind excitement and ultimately that sort of stuff uh, peters out you know but let us be planted richly and in gratitude and compassion and truth richly in his soil that we might bloom and I don't even know how much control of all this we are which is why I endeavor to surrender all of that to him which one are you where have you fallen you know are you choked by thorns right now is the sun beating down on your face far too hard are you burning up turn to him burrow into that soil for a while then just burrow into the Word of God literally in prayer in 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 spirit and in truth only planted deeply can you bloom deeply or high <laughs> or real high and tall up <laughs> anyway that's today amen Selah.